Hello everyone, welcome back to Technology Moments. I'm Alan. As always, thank you very much for watching our videos. This particular one has taken quite some time to create, as you'll be able to tell, as we wanted to bring to you the real experience that we had installing, configuring, expanding, and of course, using on a daily basis this device from Ubiquiti. We're talking about the Unify NAS Pro, the UNAS Pro, a device designed by Ubiquiti to address maybe the most important issue nowadays in every company of any size, which is data storage and data integrity. All this added to the permanent remote access to your data from anywhere in the world makes this device an outstanding choice. So many topics to discuss that that is the reason why we've split this video into three parts. So this is what we're going to talk about in this video. First, what you get when you buy one of these devices, setting it up, joining it to your cloud account or and having direct access to it. Then we're going to show you how to customize your NAS drives to use sizes and RAID options, as well as very important warnings. We'll end this video with local network access and a sneak peek to remote access using Unify Identity, having your own cloud without having to pay for those services. So let's get right to the point. If you're setting up a UNAS Pro, maybe it's because you already own Unify devices and you want to complement them using this fantastic storage device. Okay, so what we get in the box, very well packaged by the way, is what seems to be a massive NAS. And it actually is. As of the date, when we are recording this video, there is actually not much documentation from the brand online. And as you'll see, not that you're actually going to need it. Sort of. Yeah, almost 21 pounds, 9.5 kilograms, without any hard drive installed. Uh, considering that, for example, a 16 terabyte hard drive from Unify weighs about 1.6 pounds, just adding four drives will take you to 27 pounds added to your rack. Uh, as accessories, you'll get the locking power cord, the rack mounting brackets, and all the screws that you need. Actually, I only ended up using the ones for the rack mounting brackets, as the quick mounting option for the hard drives worked very good for us. And that's actually all you're going to need. It is very well built, nice aluminum finishing, as it is usual with Unify hardware, as well as the small LCD screen that you'll see will be very handy for many simple tasks. As soon as you connect it, it will actually guide you through the setup process. It features two LAN ports, one for one gigabit per second networks, which I would not recommend unless, of course, you have a one gigabit per second network. And I actually wouldn't recommend it because once you have several drives installed, its performance is going to go beyond one gigabit per second to two, 2.5, 5, and even close to six gigabit per second. That as of a reading performance. Um, the one gigabit per second Ethernet port would be then a bottleneck for your traffic if the rest of the network runs at a higher speed. By the way, much more about performance in our next video. We're going to use the one gigabit per second network access to configure it. And then we're going to have three options for the SFP plus port it features. First, you're going to have the option of a DAC cable for quick uplink to 10 gigabit per second devices at very close distances. Second, an SFP plus module for 10 gigabit per second over copper connections. And third, the alternative that most are going to use, and of course our option, as we have the availability, a 10 gigabit per second SFP plus transceiver. It is actually up to you and the infrastructure that you're going to have in place. At this moment, no disks have been installed so far, just to keep it in mind. Either option will display that you are in the setup process in the screen, so you can quickly access to the configuration process. That, by the way, can be done through the app, connecting through Bluetooth to the device directly. Actually, a process made very simple. Personally, I prefer to do it from the user's interface of the device, accessing such IP address from any web browser. No idea how to start Unify Networks? Take a look at our latest Unify Wi-Fi 7 deployment video, where the second chapter is going to be dedicated to such topic. Uh, after naming it and creating a Unify account in case that you didn't have it, don't worry that that account, even offline, you'll be able to access with its latest local credentials. I used in this case my second factor authentication and will be prompted to install our drives. Adding the drives, the most relevant topic when using a NAS. The system is compatible with SATA drives, either traditional hard disk drives or SSDs. I started by adding the first hard drive to configure and will expand it as we continue our explanation. 
which is the procedure that many may opt for. So the first answer to many questions. Yes, you can use the UNAS Pro with just one drive. We'll start with these inexpensive Barracuda 4TB hard drives. Uh, users have reported having used even 1TB hard drives for setup purposes. I will leave you a link in the description for the RAID quick guide in case that we miss something to tell you here and you want to learn a little bit more. The capabilities of the UNAS Pro are summarized in this screen, by the way. Here is the dashboard that, as we have seen with Unify, it will most likely change a lot in the next few firmware versions. Let's remember that the UNAS Pro is in the early stages of development, still a reliable storage device already. You're about to see that. In this dashboard, it will quickly show you the drive configuration, size of the disks, quick access to the setup and the user's accounts, uh, and a still a very limited 24-hour quick view of the traffic. Still, no advanced statistics. Like I said, that is going to change in the future. And for sure, there will be many changes coming as users start suggesting to Unify. Something that a lot of people want to know. With one drive active, the power consumption is about 18 to 21 watts of power. With four, it peaks and stays at 30 watts. I hear you in the comments how you can compare that to other NAS devices. For the sake of academic purposes, I created our first SMB network access user, one that is going to be used from my Fire TVs and entertainment devices to access my local movies and TV shows. That is going to be a restricted account from the important files, even if they reside in the same physical drive. For this, we create a user, but most importantly, in settings of that user, you will set file services and time machine credentials for Mac users, create the username and the corresponding password, save password. At that moment, you'll have access to the drive through your local network using those credentials. Yes, we only have one drive installed. It can also be discovered by devices on the local network with its host name. By default, you'll have access to your personal drive, which each new user gets. And of course, you'll have access to specifically created resources shared with such user, also a topic of our next video. Okay, so how can we keep expanding our NAS as we need it? Can I use a different drive size to expand the site, please? What is the recommended setup? Let's try to quickly answer those questions. As soon as I added the second drive, purposely a smaller one, this is what it showed immediately either through the app or controller, or on the screen. So here, the first very important consideration. For now, only identical drives to be used in the UNES Pro. This may change in the future if we were allowed to expand in non-RAID modes. Something I think is not going to happen. I didn't mention it at the moment, but the hard drive that I inserted as the first drive was not new. Actually, I had been using it for a year and had a lot of data in it. Backed up data. With no confirmations, no alerts, no accept or next buttons, it will erase its content and used as the first drive. So be very careful with used drives. Data is not going to be migrated, nor you'll get any confirmation. It's just going to be reformatted for the new system. I then installed an SFP Plus module connected to a fiber link, set a fixed IP address, which is the recommended option, of course, and as there was not much to know how it worked, I added a few gigabytes of information to the drive, something about 50 or 60 gigabytes. This before starting the expansion process. Then I proceeded to insert the second identical 4 terabyte hard drive. These two first hard drives very well may have been a 16 or 24 terabyte hard drive. Then it started a synchronization or expansion process that took a couple days. It does not matter if you had 40, 50, or 400 gigabytes stored, as what it was doing was mirroring the first drive over the second one. We're going to show you here in our schemes the protection drive in orange, although we all know that parity protection may be distributed among all of them. Yes, at this moment, second answer for many, no stripped volumes, which means no RAID 0, sort of like a given as the idea Unify has with this NAS is data protection or so it seems, with all the options that you have, not only for protecting locally, but the possibility of linking to another UNAS Pro or a cloud service. About this expansion, it has to be identical or bigger in storage, as we said, but in case that you use a bigger one, that additional storage is not going to be used. So many may think at this moment, of two 4 terabyte hard drives, you'll only be able to use 4 terabytes. And you're right, and at this point, there was no performance gain. It has to write the same data 
on both drives. Maybe a little improvement in reading speeds, as it can read from both, but to be honest, I didn't test it. So here, a consideration. This is the most inefficient setup of your Unify NAS Pro. Two drives. I was gonna go for three hard drives now, right after finishing the first synchronization, same size of course, and this time it also took about two days to have this third drive ready to be used. Something normal when using this type of RAID arrays, where data not only has to be copied, but redistributed with a heavy load for the processor, by the way. Uh, and about this, this is the power consumption of the unit with these many hard drives when idling. Now we could see an improvement in performance as now the NAS, when writing, is writing in three drives. Well, two actually, the other one is the parity. But you get the idea. But about this important issue, performance and data throughput, we'll analyze it in our next video. Every time you add a new hard drive, system starts rebuilding and here are two aspects that are critical for your information integrity. The first one is that you cannot interrupt the process by removing any hard drive. And the second one, have your NAS connected to a UPS. However, having an outage of more than your battery backup can provide can be potentially catastrophic for your data. At this time, I had three drives, adding up to 12 terabytes, but only eight are going to be usable. The third one, the parity, which is that component of a RAID system that lets you predict the data that was stored in a failed drive. This, for those of you new to disk arrays, also when you have a RAID 5, such as the one being used right now, each member disk can be replaced and it is configured by the system automatically, as you've seen, should any of the disks fail. And here is when hot spare option is a fantastic idea, especially for unattended devices or devices that cannot be physically supervised often, uh, giving the option to the system that if a drive fails, it will replace it with the hot spare. Awesome alternative. I finished all this process ordering another 4TB hard drive identical to the first two I installed. We wanted greater efficiency and capacity, going from 66% efficiency to 75%, and we could reach 85% in RAID 5 using the 7 base. I waited till the hard drive arrived, got here, installed it, same process as adding the third drive. It also took a couple days for it to be ready, but now I have 12 terabytes to store and a 4 terabyte hard drive that is actually sort of acting like my backup. This, as if any of the drive fails, my data is protected. The whole purpose of a RAID system. As you can see right here, even identical drives as this one is to the first two are going to be detected as different. Even slight variations on the model and the system will identify one of them as the performance limiter. So another advice at this moment, buy all your drives at once and get a spare unit. I actually don't know if I would have it as a hot spare, but definitely I will get one. For example, I don't know if it's kept powered and what its lifespan will be. At no point we have seen this value go to standby mode, which means that the disks are constantly spinning, shortening their lifespan. The last question we may answer at this point is that whenever you add a new hard drive, even though you cannot interrupt the process, you can add more information to the system and to the array, of course, at a limited performance level. Uh, very interesting now with four units and the possibility of expanding it as needed. Uh, the design could reach a maximum of 28 terabytes, 24 of which are actually storage. Of course, you can use a combination of much bigger hard drives that are available in the market today. I can use any additional drive as a hot spare, or even if I added a couple more drives, I could configure RAID 10, which is nothing more than an improvement in performance, as it would be as if I had three drives running in a mirrored volume. In RAID 10 configuration, the seventh drive will always act as a hot spare should any drive fail. Actually, that is not RAID 10 as we know it, as that would be a combination of RAID 0 and RAID 1. As for local network access, you will need to set up a username and password for each username uh, for SMB access, and that's it. If you want that to appear always as a network unit, as you can see right here, the only thing that you need to do is to select Map a Network Drive from the Windows Explorer, check that you're always going to need it every time you log in, and it will always connect to it, having it at your fingertips to access your data. 
As for additional network resources, even though it will change over time, the essence will be exactly the same. You can go to all files, then add a shared drive, specify its name, its storage limit, and the users who will have access. In our next video, we'll be showing you how to access your data from anywhere in the world using Unify Identity or any other VPN connection to your Unify Gateway. We will make a practical example on how to configure it importing users from an Active Directory environment so you can add a system like this one to your enterprise in no time. Every VPN access to your Unify Gateway, which would be mandatory for Unify Identity, will let you access your data through your Explorer as if the NAS were local to your remote network. We've used it for a couple months and in a scale from 1 to 10, we're going to give it a solid 8. This is not a NAS intended for entertainment, which you can also use it for. It will not have any personalization and store apps as many other brands in the market. It is a NAS mostly intended for data protection performance and availability, especially when adding several drives and system availability for the hotspur option it features, as well as the remote backup options that we'll explore also in the future in other videos. Okay guys, hope this video was as informative as it was intended. Your kind support to our channel and to the time and effort that we put into these videos is just to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. See you next time.